Uh, it's in the back there somewhere. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> so, the internet is something we all know and love and use in our day to day lives. Um, it keeps us entertained for hours on end. Tons of things you can do on there. However, I'm going to be arguing that the internet is having a negative effect on the social aspects of our lives. And in three main ways. One, the internet is making us less effective interpersonal communicators. Uh, two, it's creating a, a separation from the real world, specifically with smartphones. And three, we're becoming increasingly dependent on the internet. So one, the internet is making us less effective interpersonal communicators. Communication is just like any other skill. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, whether you're playing the piano or learning to ride a bike or shooting baskets and working on your jump shop, it's something you gotta keep doing to get better at. And typing online or having text message conversations or being on social media, it's not gonna do the same effect as um, actually talking to people is. And so then we got streaming platforms like Netflix and video games like Fortnite, which are all gaining increased popularity. Um, according to Statista, millennials are spending an average of four hours a day online on PCs, tablets, and uh, laptops. And this could include the 118 million subscribers that Netflix currently has and the average hour and a half of video that is streamed on their site daily by their subscribers, according to Time Magazine. Uh, this is not to mention other platforms like Hulu, Amazon, HBO, and YouTube's whopping 1.2 billion hours of video that are being watched daily as well. So there's all this time being spent online that could be spent um, socializing or talking to people. Uh, recently, a popular video game called Fortnite was released on October of 2017, and they reported that within two weeks of release, uh, they amassed 10 million players. Now this is just one video game, and in two weeks, they got 10 million people to sign up and start playing. So again, this doesn't take into consideration the tons of other thousands of video games that are out there and how much time is being spent on those. So then we have the smartphone, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit, uh, which I'm gonna talk about more in a little bit, right? but right now I'm gonna focus on the convenience of applications. So slowly but surely, the need for face-to-face -face interaction is slowly being decreased uh, thanks to the internet. And the most basic everyday things like shopping or uh, going out to buy food are being simplified. Uh, first off, the, in the dating scene, we have apps like Tinder that are eliminating that initial nerve-wracking interaction to ask somebody out. So now you can just make a profile and then swipe on people you like and don't like and then further um, set up a date at a later time. So going back to basic everyday things like shopping or buying food, we got Amazon and stuff like Postmates where you can get everything brought to your doorstep without, having, without ever having to interact with a single person. Um, assuming you had a large sum of money, you would never, you can basically live off of this and never have to talk to anyone ever again in your entire life. Um, and for entertainment, you can survive, like I said, off of streaming platforms and video games and thousands of things that there is to do online. Um, and of course, this is like such a small bit of interaction that is being removed with these apps. Uh, talking to the cashier, talk, ordering your food at the restaurant or whatever. But who's to say in the future that things won't get worse with stuff like virtual reality, which um, is becoming more and more advanced and that technology is becoming more prominent. So in the future, people might not even want to talk to people at all. They can just live at home and entertain themselves through all these means and survive. Uh, two, the internet creates separation from the real world with smartphones. So ever since the first groundbreaking smartphone came out in 2007, being the iPhone, uh, the computing power it had proved to be revolutionary. But apart from the benefits and convenience that came from it, I feel like having a supercomputer in your pocket contributes to an easy escape in any social situation and can have negative consequences. So according to Statista, millennials are spending almost four hours per day online on their mobile devices. Now how many times has it happened when you're out with friends and everyone is on their phone? Um, whether it be at a family parties or you're hanging out with friends or uh, wherever, people rather browse their social media feeds or be online on their phone. Um, then you have Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which states that the third most important need is love and belonging. This is something that humans want. And always being on your phone is creating this barrier between your relationships when you're out with people, and it's preventing you from reaching that need and higher needs like esteem, self-esteem, and self-actualization. Now, in October of 2012, an article posted on the website Psychology Today 
by public health researcher Jacinta Francis, who got her PhD in public health from the University of Western Australia. Um, she showcased various studies that found that on online relationships are not sufficient replacements for real relationships. And real relationships are definitely necessary in order to fulfill that third need on Maslow's hierarchy. And smartphones are getting in the way of that. Um, in class, you can use your smartphone, your smartphone to browse the internet, and it'll distract you from the lesson at hand. It can cause a negative effect on your grades and create a lesser educated population at work. Same thing, it can decrease productivity if people are slacking off online on the computer or on their phone, and it's going to, like I said, uh, create a, uh, a less productive workforce. And even on the road, like people are using their phones now more than ever, and according to the National Safety Council, they report that one out of every four car, ac car accidents in the U.S. are caused by using your phone and driving. Uh, so before, whereas a telephone would be used merely to talk to people, now it's creating a lot more distractions that can lead to negative consequences in any social aspect. And three, we are becoming dependent on the internet. Um, there's something called the phantom notification effect, where I'm sure you guys have had where you feel like your phone vibrated or something and you check your pocket and you didn't get a notification. This is just showing how much use we're putting into our phones and how dependent we're becoming on them. Uh, not only that, it's something like when you're out with friends again or whatever and someone gets up to use the restroom and in that 30 second interval that they're gone, you, have, you feel the need to check your phone even for those 30 seconds. It's like you can't just be in the moment. It's like this constant need to be checking and being online at all times, being connected. And finally, with social media, there's like this need to post online, especially in the younger generations, where like if you don't have an online profile, or if you're not posting online as much, it's like you're not cool, or you're not, um, you don't belong with your peers, which again is more prominent in younger generations. But uh, it's becoming more ne necessary to have an online profile. And even in the job market with sites like LinkedIn, it's necessary to network and connect and have jobs. So. Uh, again, the internet is having a negative effect on the social aspects of our lives in three main ways. It's making us less effective into personal communicators, it's creating a distraction from the real world, specifically with smartphones, and it's making us more and more dependent on it and is affecting our, in our independence. Were you going to give me the final draft? Yeah, I'll bring it Oh, okay. I thought maybe that's what you were using to speak from. Sorry. All right. Um, proposition's clear. Uh, an excellent layout of what the contents are going to be at the beginning of the speech. Internally, you also cite those points very clearly as you go along. I also like the summary at the end. So organizationally, everything's going to be fine and easy to follow. Uh, there are a lot of assumptions in the speech that you generally explain. You don't always prove, but I do think you kind of give some explanations as to why you believe that they're true. Uh, the, there's a lot of hypotheticals that are going on here. And uh, the hypotheticals are probably very likely, and some of them seem probable, but uh, they aren't the best evidence that there is possible. Uh, more practical examples would be helpful, and of course, if there was some statistical information, and I think that that's where there's a little bit of lacking. There's not a lot of statistical information on this. We did get one specific quote that referred to... Um, you know, the, uh, how the online life doesn't substitute for the, uh, the real relationships. And I assume that that was connected to Maslow. I'm not exactly sure that that was the premise of the psychologist that you're quoting there. Uh, we did get some statistical information. I didn't mean to suggest that there wasn't any, but it's mostly about how much time is being spent on these devices as opposed to, you know, number of friends that people have, uh, problems in relationships, or illustrations. The fact that people spend a lot of time on these devices does not necessarily indicate that there's a problem here. Uh, just as a, a simple illustration, I've heard almost exactly all the same kinds of arguments that you're talking about now, way back in 1979. <laughs> you know, and people talked about that with uh, cable television and television. 
you know, and uh, MTV, oh my gosh, MTV was going to ruin people's lives, and maybe it did ruin some people's lives, you know, I imagine that that's the case, but uh, whenever there's a new technology that comes along, there are lots of charges that are made against it. What you want to do is make your argument a little bit stronger, not just talk about what the potential issues are and describe what people do, but, you know, show that there's an inference to be made from that. The notion that people can't be alone for 30 seconds and just be in the moment, the world's full of people who've been like that forever, you know, uh, people who always carry a book with them, people who doodle while they're sitting, you know, someplace doing that kind of stuff. The question is, is this having a harmful effect on the relationships that they have? Uh, you're suggesting that there's an automatic trade-off. I think I need a little bit more information to show that this trade-off really occurs. All right. Thank you.